Vážení priatelia, dámy a páni, som veľmi rád, že ste sem prišli a chcel by som privítať nielen vás, ale aj ľudí, čo nás sledujú na internete. Povedali mi, že sú ich stavky, čiže to publikum je oveľa väčšie, mnohopočetnejšie, než tu môžeme vidieť. Tie témy, o ktorých budeme hovoriť, sú samozrejme veľmi zaujímavé, ale máme tu aj fantastických hostí. Nebudem venovať veľa času ich predstavovaniu, len krátko. Po mojej lavici je Fato Slobonia z Albánska, je to veľmi známy spisovateľ, ale aj z môjho pohľadu je to človek, ktorý strávil 17 rokov vo väzení v Albánsku a zrejme tieto albánske väzenia patria k tým najhorším v Európe. Ale keď sa na vás pozerám, tak vyzeráte, ako keby ste strávili tých 17 rokov vo fitcentre, vo fitku, ale samozrejme neodporúčam pobyt vo väzení na tento účel. Ďalej tu máme Slavomíra Syrakovského, to je ďalšia generácia. Zatiaľ som nebol vo vezení, no ale nikdy nevieš. Even younger, and he is now was very, very operative. We invited him because he is one of the organizers of the biggest demonstration in Hungary two weeks ago against the internet tax. So we will... Actually, the model of this debate is thought like we are two veterans, old guys, who had been trying to survive communism and also maybe so not so much to change it, but it happened then we took part in the changes. And the younger generation, which is now in, in, in uh, uh, they are keen to change the system now. Uh, so I, I think we have something common And we will now debate about that, what actually we have in common, but also mostly about the future. We will not so much um, talk about the past because uh, it's, it's not so interesting anymore. But um, first of all, I was thinking about um, to start with the youngers. Um, and uh, so Slavic, um, you... <laughs> Well, actually, how, how old are you? He's younger. How, how old are you? 30. 30? Well, I look younger, but he's younger. Oh. <laughs> I don't comment this. And it's just, okay, 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 you are right. So, Karol, uh, just try to, we start with a, with a personal, personal experience and personal, you know, kind of a short story. What's your story in these last two weeks? How do you feel and what happened? There is an active uh, activist community in uh, Budapest uh, mainly today. And, uh, it actually formed in the recent years. Uh, my roots are in the student network, which organized uh, protests, occupations in 2012 and 2013. Um, we are active in politics, but not active in party politics. Although there are some members of this community who participate uh, somehow in party politics as well, but not on a, on a high level. Um, we consider ourselves independent, uh, that's why. And uh, our role in the recent demonstrations was in our understanding uh, the role of the facilitator. We, uh, of course, so these demonstrations were mainly organized by the government <laughs> in a sense that they introduced the internet tax law and uh, the society reacted really uh, in, a, in a really uh, big way. I mean, uh, what I see now uh, in conversations, what I see now on the internet is unprecedented. Uh, 
I'm co-editing a blog and our, uh, the visitor statistics goes in the sky. Uh, I know a lot of friends who were not active previously in any um, political movement. They were not actually that uh, interested in politics. But now, uh, they took out a day from the work to go to a demonstration. I think that, so that's why I think that something's already changed. Uh, the question is, of course, uh, the future, which we never see, but uh, I think that this, 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 this is a really important thing. I, because one thing would be the reach. How can the messages reach the society. I don't know uh, exactly how the media uh, works, for example, here or, or in uh, your country, but uh, uh, we have a really divided media scene, really, really divided, and so it's like, uh, like if you uh, would live in two different countries uh, based on what you read. Uh, and I hope, uh, on the one hand, and this will change things, I mean like, people will, uh, will, will actually have more information they, because, because it's not that easy to get to them, but if they have some idea that, hmm, maybe I can get, I, I, I mean the people are saying that I, I can get to them, uh, then, it's, uh, that's, then it's much easier. On the other hand, okay, the question is the content, of course. What? you want to relay to the society. And for this to happen, I think that this is the time, or the time already came already, but uh, we were not in place. But uh, what I think is that we should somehow invent a language, a language which is free of this division, and somehow we can talk at last about important questions considering not just our country, not just our lives, but this region, and that's why I really enjoy being here. Because when I was last time uh, invited by Kritika Politichna in Cheshin, uh, I really felt that we have a lot in common which we don't know about. And we might uh, learn from each other. We might uh, like uh, get to this language which will allow us to like talk about uh, real problems and talk about more the reality, not constructions, uh, and I think that we can cooperate in this. Um, okay, but that's um, so you. I and mean, what happened in Hungary was just out of nothing. It almost it was like I was surprised. I mean, probably well, of course, thanks to Orban who wanted, who didn't understand probably what what internet means for for young people. So uh, he probably was surprised too. But but. There was a reaction. It's not like you are, you are the different uh, um, animal that because you think that it should be, as far as I understand, you work systematically on, on the different way of doing or preparing changes or trying to change the society. So how do you think about all this? I mean, what do you do actually? Why do you, why do, you do what do you do? Thank you. Um, First time I hear that I do something systematically in my life, but um, I'm flattered. Um, mm, well, actually, we work systematically probably because uh, not only because we really want it, but uh, there was needed somehow, or like the, the, it was necessary to do it. Of course, we would uh, prefer to change it like this, but this is actually the problem that you cannot do it. And I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the uh, Hungarian protests, but uh, but the you know experiences that we have and that you, you can gather it easily um, from not only Occupy Wall Street or Indignados, but much more similar, if not exactly the same, protests uh, um, concerning ACTA, which st started in Poland and then in Bulgaria and then around the entire Europe. Um, it disappeared just immediately when uh, the, the, the law was not implemented. Um, so th this was... And then it, it, you can... You can easily um, see that 
first, it's very hard to turn from social protest to social movement. This is the new phenomenon, that you don't have it anymore. Like your times were different. You, can, you could rely that a certain agenda with, with a certain people will uh, end up with the social movement. Your example of dissidents will work for the broader public after some time and not immediately and of course with many, many obstacles. What happens now is that it's just impossible somehow. I will try to explain why, what I think about it and why we do what we do. Um, and uh, um, so, and so the, the, the other thing is so that... Um, so, okay, let, let me stick to this topic. So first of all, unfortunately, um, in those depoliticized deeply depoliticized Western societies and actually uh, Hungarian society or Polish are more and more Western societies. Now we, I mean, we in Poland, let me announce it to you, are not anymore a part of Eastern Europe, we are a part of Northern Europe now. <laughs> That's what they think in the government. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's getting to be more and more westernized, of course, everywhere in, the, in, the, in this part of Europe. And Slovakia is even more westernized, of course, because you, get, you have Euro, which is the dream of the governments. At least in Poland, probably Orban is thinking about rubles now. <laughs> but um, but, um, uh, but the, the, the problem is that all, the, those protests are very anti-political, unfortunately. Like ACTA was anti-political. It, it could have hardcore libertarians staying next to like you know some remnants of communism uh, or new crazy communists from i don't know dilinka let's say who are also thinking about you know implementing rubles which is a problem um but uh, but uh, so first is the problem with the politicization second when i'm saying that we are westernized i mean we are individualized and individualization went uh, so, to the extent that we probably do not see, do not, do not, I mean, we seem not to be a society anymore. If you take the, you know, any definition of society from the founding fathers of sociology, you will see that what happens now looks more like a state of nature, modernized, in a modernized way, advanced technologically. We can have Facebook, Twitter, whatever, but we are if you know the novel of Michel Welbeck, Elementary Particles, we look like elementary particles rather than a certain so social structure. This is exactly the reason why you cannot have a social movement. There is no, like in those, in this kind of social metrics, there is no agenda which would organize people. You cannot organize people from, a, from the top because they are not, first of all, organized organically like a, like, like, like a society should be or was before. So this is actually, which is very interesting, and this is how I would like to connect what I'm saying to the anniversary that we celebrate. Uh, um, uh, because what I really think and what I really believe, because I don't want to be only the, you know, the, the, I don't want to be, you know, whining and compla complaining. I would like to have an answer. What we do is we try not to open questions only, but to give answers. Um, and the answer, I think, is something which is very, very, very uh, uh, dissident or no dissident answer. Somehow it's the, 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 the political philosophy which was, you know, uh, put to archives. The, the way how the dissidents w were organizing people, and the way how they was, were thinking about common experience, com activism, how to create a trust among the people. Because what, what I mean by individual societies, I mean that people are close in their particular perspectives. When they 
After 1989, the message for the people, and for us, this is why we established Kritika, was that we don't need you anymore like an intelligentsia. We don't need guys in sweaters. We need guys in suits, because we want to have a middle class, not intelligentsia. We don't want you to be altruistic anymore. We want you to be egoistic, because those small egoism, invisible hand of the market would aggregate and create a welfare for everybody. This is what we're going to do in, in our liberal democracies, because we want to have a capitalism and democracy in Poland, in Hungary, Slovakia, Czech Republic, everywhere. And, uh, and, and, and we said, first we said no, because we wanted also to have our romantic uh, um, being like them, like Havel, Kuron, Michnik, all those guys. But then I realized that not only a form of their activism, but the content of their activism is still uh, to be used because they knew how to overcome the particular perspectives. The problem in the communism, like the shopkeeper problem in the power of powerless, was how to do something different than people usually do. And uh, this is exactly the problem now. People are thinking you know, on the everyday basis, and that's okay, that's fine. That's like, you know, no one would accuse strongly even Havel, the shopkeeper. But if you will find at least a small amount of people, like dissidents were a small amount of people, to play for the a bit higher stake, then at some point maybe you can count on something more that will be a social movement and not only a social protest. Actually, this is not by chance that our friend was our guest in one of our camps in Cheshire when, when we have a cultural center and when we have a people who are on the everyday basis uh, trying to help their local society. Or Vasil is my comrade from Ukraine. We are the same organization as well. So as you see, this network is, you know, it's not something which just became now and tomorrow will be ended. No, we're going to do what we do, trying to create the social glue, trying to create stronger social bonds than you usually have as users of Facebook or Twitter. This, I think, can give you something more, maybe, in future. You never know. This is the risk. Um, thank you. Uh, yes. Um, you have now this advantage, advantage of being connected without borders and so on. We actually, I, I, honestly, I didn't know about you when I was in 80s in, uh, in, uh, in communism because I had no, actually no information about the others. It was very difficult to have this connection. Well, we, we had some with Poles and, of course, with Czechs and some Hungarians. But, so this is a big difference. But, but when, you, when you look at what's going on today with all these young, um, well, you say no movement, social movements, but protests, let's say, uh, how do you feel about that? Having your experience of that the system actually can collapse and do you think that these, these protests, um, what, what do you think? Do you, do you feel something common with your experience? Oh, yes. I sympathize very much with both of them. In spite of that, as far as I know and as far as I see, they are a bit different. So one is more protest against a sort of authoritarian. <laughs> authoritarian <laughs> urban uh, and the other is a more a protest as far as I understood maybe I'm wrong somehow <coughs> to change this system this neoliberal system to change th something which is a, somehow a crisis that you, we find not only in our countries let's say but even in the West as far as I understood. And I sympathize with both of them. If I would speak about my experience, I think my country is, is somehow challenging both of them, but without any kind of movement. And uh, as far as the challenge of the authoritarian system is concerned, I find it more easy, in a way, but not that easy in countries like ours, at least in the Balkans. 
As far as the challenge of, of the system, the capitalistic system, the neoliberal system, in our countries, more or less, we are waiting for the West to change, for some, we are waiting for pioneers to follow. But since you spoke about, so, so this, 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 to go to the first point, the, the challenge of authoritarian system, and, and to, to tell something about our experience, my experience as well, I could, I heard the discussions saying that it was easier uh, in our times uh, to make the division between us and them because it was more clear the border but uh, in my experience at least in the experience of my country and then I go back to, to, to urban it was not that easy so just to tell you the experience of my life when I was arrested for the first time I was 23 so I was released when I was 40, so the age of these guys I spent in jail somehow. You were 40. <laughs> yes, I mean, between 23 and 40, you are already. <laughs> so, I, guess, I hope you are less than 40. <laughs> so, what happened is that the Secret Service had found my, my writings, my diaries, and a uh, novel I had written, which was, a liter it, which was a cassette literature. And I didn't know that they'd, they had found them. And I was uh, sent to the police station first. And I met two guys. One was the deputy director of the Secret Services of Albania, and one was the guy who became my investigator after. And they were very distant, and, and uh, I didn't know. And uh, they asked me, we are here, we want to know about your political opinions. And I said, I, in my instinct, uh, as I said, uh, it's um, like a bombshell, this question for me. Let's be a bombshell, they said. And just to defend myself without knowing that they had my writings, I said, uh, like all the rest of us, you know, us, you know, because it's us and them. So us, what was it? Us was, let's say, the official propaganda, what all people were saying, because we were used since our youth that the sheep who strolls from the flock it's eaten by the wolf and so you have to be inside the flock and so I was trying to stay inside the flock because it was a regime that could so the slogan of our dictator was if you rise your, your finger we cut your hand if you rise your hand we cut your head so this was anyway and then they they showed me that they had my items and uh, <coughs> so this us means very often even fear to try to be part of us and all the challenge at least in my life has been uh, to, to, to become uh, an individual somehow to, to challenge the wolf which has been the power and I could say that with all what happened during the, uh, the so-called revolution, I don't call it revolution in my country, uh, maybe we learned something how to challenge the power, authoritarian power. And uh, I'm not sure about that. I still consider myself a double outsider in my country, and I will explain it later, what do I mean. But still we have some sort of immunity towards uh, authoritarian system. I live in a country where we had, have, have had elections and we have changed uh, two parties. And uh, the change has been basic, basically linked to the fact that after two, two uh, mandates, the guy 
started to become a, as a leader, evoking the leader, the absolute <coughs> leader of the times. And then the vote against him has been, a, most of all, a vote against this absolute leader. But what we have not still learned, in my view, and we didn't have any sort of community, was the conformity with the dominating ideology. With so neoliberalism became uh, the ideology of power of the new elite, who basically changed code mostly, and what happened, I considered myself as if we cross somehow I, am, I didn't hear in these debates uh, these days the word post-democracy. It's, a, it's a Kevin Cloach, uh, an American poly, politologist who has coined it. The idea is that in the West, uh, now it's no more democracy, but it's post-democracy in the sense that the decision-making is not made uh, by people, as democracy means, by the, <coughs> but, but by the so-called uh, lobbies, they call it in the states, oligarchs we call them in our countries, generally speaking. It has been studied in the States during, uh, during uh, this year or that last year <coughs> about more than 1,500 uh, decisions taken by the American government. And it has been, it's a study made by two economists who, who studied, uh, they have, uh, they have, uh, taken different social economical classes of American society and asked them uh, if they agreed or disagreed with this decision making. And after, I don't know how many people they have uh, uh, somehow asked, and it seems that those who agreed with this decision making were the upper classes, generally. So this is somehow the meaning of, and, and of post-democracy. And that's why I sympathize with these guys who now think that uh, we went too far in individualism <coughs> and we need, we need not to turn back to the older times, I mean to socialize our economy and so on, but we need much more to socialize our responsibilities our, for what and that's why I sympathize very much with, this, uh, with these movements who I see as an attempt to, to socialize our responsibilities, to, to, to be part of the decision making through parties or not with, through, through parties, maybe through civil society and through... Well, well um, I remember I try to be part of debate because I, I'm, I'm playing this role of Richard Brown as well as a moderator too. So uh, I remember that uh, I see two things which were crucial for, for changes in 89. And uh, the pretext of that was the definition of the situation. And the power of powerless by Havels, I mean, his essay was, was crucial because it defined I mean, what all of us somehow knew, but we were not able to, to express it or to, to, to clearly think about it. So the definition is ne very much needed. Um, then you have to realize how do you live or what's, what's all about. That's very, I mean, and I think it's crucial. That's what I still miss today, for example. And the second thing is, if you define the situation, then you will have to... Uh, propose what should be changed. And it was very easy. I mean, the, the first thing was very difficult, and I think that's what the most talented people like Havel and the others had been trying a lot. Well, finally, some of them uh, did it successfully, like Václav Havel. Uh, but then, I mean, to, to find uh, the way how to change was quite easy. Free elections, and, well, and the communists should go, and, 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 and freedom as such. 
uh, and then maybe Western European uh, way of life and this political system. So it was, so that was quite easy. But I think in a situation today, I still miss the definition, and I still miss, and most of all, I miss uh, what to do. So how do you, what do you say about this? Both of you, however. Okay. We can learn a lot from history, I think. And that's why it's great that you talk about your experiences, but we can go back even further. Uh, if you just uh, get that sentence, what you said, Slavomir, that uh, yeah, Orban is thinking about the rubles currently, I think this is, yeah, it, 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 so it's, it's definitely not funny. Uh, if you look at the Hungarian history, the, uh, so the Russian Empire played a big role uh, at least two times uh, in the last uh, 150 years when uh, the revolutions, uh, uh, our, the Hungarian revolutions were oppressed, I mean like uh, um, brought down. And uh, I think since uh, 89, we grew up, or I actually, at, at least I grew up in a world where I, I considered myself free by definition. I considered uh, the future as a developing future by definition. Recently, I just recently uh, realized that I, I think what's happening now that a lot of people are realizing this as well, that this is not the case. So, so yeah, we definitely need to interpret the situation, what we are in. Because, yeah, first, just some second-class politician will say that, okay, we will exit the European Union, and then everybody is laughing at him. But after a year or two, maybe that will come back in a more powerful way, and then somehow I, 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 I can't... Uh, imagine it how, but it can turn to reality as a lot of things in Hungary turned to reality in recent four years, uh, which were unexpected or, or unbelievable before. Uh, but the problem is, of course, not just with this uh, four years, and that's why I, that's where I arrived to your second question, uh, partly. But first, yeah, for the big picture we have to see that uh, the lack of alternatives, the lack of uh, trustable political power uh, or party uh, is one of the main reasons that we don't have a real uh, agenda for the future and that we don't have an alternative now. Uh, the Hungarian opposition uh, it really can't really be in a worse position as uh, they are now. Uh, None of the parties have any fantasy, any political fantasy, any uh, power and any support. May, uh, most of them don't have much support in the society. And if you see then the percentage of the uh, elections, I mean like the society, which how, how, how many people uh, go to the elections, then you see this line going down, down, down since uh, in the, our first election in uh, 1990. This is what needs to be changed, I think, in the first, uh, for the, so, so first. Because, uh, yeah, if, if we talk about democracy and we talk about legitimization, I mean like the, to legitimize the power, then you can't do it without the people. And, okay, I, I am rhyming every time back to my uh, two uh, points, like the language and, and the reach. So, and, and then you have to uh, say something about this alternative. What I feel is, uh, is that the inequalities in the society, uh, which are, yeah, there are a lot of societies which are more unfortunate than ours, but... Uh, if, if you uh, know something about the Hungarian society this, in these days, we can unfortunately say that this is a, a 10 million country with about 4 million uh, under uh, the poverty line. 
And uh, so this is, this is becoming half of the society being so poor that they can't afford the minimum qualities of life. So uh, that's why we both think, I think, uh, that, that this is the time of the new left, uh, by which I don't mean the corrupt oligarchs of the previous left, which all the society thinks, and this is a language problem, problem again, but, but, but we mean more equality in the society, and by this buzzword, neoliberalism, it, as I know, it, the, the meaning of neoliberalism changed over time, and it can be detected when it changed, and uh, which uh, actual actions led it to be reinterpreted. I don't think that, uh, so I, I, I heard neoliberalism recently always in a bad sense. Actually, it's a word uh, of a bad meaning. It's uh, a word, yeah. But, uh, but we don't talk much about, well, uh, that, that, that economy which le like has a social aspect. Uh, there is a word for that actually, which I am just um, trying to find. But you know, when uh, you live uh, economically liberal, you respect uh, uh, the competition, but at the same time, you do uh, a minimum. You uh, uh, you, you can uh, like say that okay, under this line, nobody can be. Uh, okay, I know that this is not this easy, but. I really hope that, because now we are at the time, actually in Hungary, within the negative uh, uh, messages, yeah. Uh, this is what happening is uh, truly and really bad. And uh, our democratic checks and balances are destroyed, our institutions are being destroyed, and this is, again, not that funny. Uh, but uh, I hope that the time of the positive messages will come and because the society is in this bad shape I hope that we or somehow we will be able to tell uh, our ideas of the future in a way that it will be uh, so everybody will understand and if uh, we have uh, enough people who understood the message then I think this is a change already. Well, yeah. You remember that Lenin has said the worse, the better. Um, so, I mean, it just if Hungary is really very, very bad, so you think it could be changed. But, okay, but Poland is not so bad in that. What, but, Marek uh, Slavik, what, what's your then, I mean, definition and idea? I mean, how can you think about that? <coughs> is there any? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in a similar, oh, yes. similar condition in our Don't contemporary worry. politics. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you ask first what is to be done. You remember who asked this question. What is to be done? Yeah. Who was it? No, well, when it was. No, no. no. Czernyszewski, Nikolai Czernyszewski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. And, um, and he, he actually, uh, Dostoevsky wrote an answer to this uh, question. He, that what is to be done is the name of the novel about love and about the triangle, actually. And, uh, but Czernyszewski has an idea which somehow is similar to what is ruling now as a liberalism or neoliberalism. However, of course, it's uncomparable. But like the one thing is similar. It's about... It was a, his idea was like, let's harmonize our egoisms. This is what, what, what I was explaining or like describing to you before. And, and so notes from the underground that you know uh, by Dostoevsky, when the guy is like, you know, waking up and saying, you know, everything, life is shit, you know, and like, and then ending up that I really want to commit suicide and so on and so on, was, that, was the idea that like, if we, come, how we can co harmonize our rationalisms and everything is determined and so on and so on, if I can commit suicide. And it, this expression, this committing suicide could be like a expression of freedom. But I'm, but I'm, uh, but, uh, but, 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 so, and, and actually, it, it, what, what, what was the descent of the, of this intellectual, which, who was Russian, very conservative, very strongly state believer, 
after Katorga, actually, when he met Polish dissidents and he was so pissed off by Polish dissidents because they were different than Russian dissidents, the Russian peasants. Polish dissidents, the, the problem with Polish dissidents were that they thought that they are not guilty. Uh, and this was actually the big problem for Dostoevsky. But the idea, um, um, but the, the idea was that you cannot have a crystal palace. You cannot have, you cannot harmonize people. If your if your idea of a conference is us and them, this Carl Schmidt division, is that the politics is always about the conflict. Politics is always about antagonism. And then now, if you remember, the promise of 1989 was not only not only a promise of procedural democracy and the free market, but also a promise of consensus. We in Polish language first, because it was a new word, started to write it by C by C consensus, like in the Latin version. Only after a few years we started to, we polonized this word and started to write it by K, by K. Um, and, uh, and then, so the idea was that we don't need to quarrel anymore. After we overcame communism, the quarrel is not possible, it's not needed anymore. Actually, this was a very anti-democratic idea, because if you don't have light, le left and right, and all of the dissidents almost wanted to be beyond left and right, until 1989, most of them were leftists, they were saying that they are social democrats or even socialists. After it, they did not want it to, they wanted to be open society. And, uh, and I, Actually, this idea is pretty anti-democratic, anti-political, because who will vote for closed society? I had, a, I had a talk, this kind of talk, with George Soros, and I immediately and strongly criticized the idea of open society, which I suggest, I recommend you as the best strategy to fundraise with George Soros, uh, because he's so old that he, he's, he's, he's sleeping when he's seeing, hearing that, yes, George, you're right, George. So provoke him, and then you're going to get your millions. <laughs> and uh, and this, is, this is actually an anti-democratic idea, because, uh, because, because there is no conflict. There is no us and them. And when, when there is no conflict, there is nothing to be chosen. Okay? You, ca you, you cannot choose your ideas if there is only one on the table that is correct, that is open society version. Okay? And this is what we have after 1989. We had not left and right, we had right and wrong. And, uh, and this, this, uh, this actually, after, uh, and look what happened. When open society people were dealing with a very hard transition, it worked like a self-fulfilling prophecy that sooner or later they had to make mistakes. Or, and then, People voted for other people, for closed society. This is why you had Mechiar, we had Kaczynski, they had Orban. Always, or not in every country, someone like closed society representation came to power. This is why, this is why it was much better and more pluralistic, democratic, was to have left and right instead of this other anti-political division. This was one big problem with transition when we are talking in the time of anniversary. Then, uh, then let's come back to the text of uh, Václav Havel to tell you what's the future definitions. Because it's not, you don't need to invent dynamite. Uh, and if you really believe that we will, that we invent now that, like we new guys, we're gonna, our job is to invent new discourse, new, you know, ideas, and then we're gonna, you know, overcome the, what, all our problems. It's not the dissidents that they invented democracy and free market. I mean, you are great guys, but it were, it were not you, okay? You, you delivered it to the people by overcoming communism. However, it was Polish Pope that did it, let's be honest. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But this, that's what they believe in Poland. <laughs> but, um, but so actually you have all the definitions in this great essay. But what was interesting with, in this essay is that, um, uh, that, that what, what Havel was saying was, was not only uh, about the communism, 
was also about a capitalism. If you, Havel was very exceptional uh, dissident. Most of the dissidents were not thinking about capitalism, but, and were like they thought that you know everything which is far from communism is a paradise. So a capitalism is something that you really don't need to think about too much because if you're gonna get it, you're gonna be in heaven. So this is what 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 really. And I remember when there was a new edition of Havel's text, Adam Bichnik wrote that hmm, he read it again. And he thinks that you know the, the, they were not thinking about it really. Only Havel was thinking about it. And and in this text or in other texts, there is a book uh, uh, interview in, with done with Havel in 1986. What was what is this name? This this hearing zaucne przez słuchanie in Polish. When when he compares IBM to Skoda. Do you remember? And he says that it's almost, it's it's pretty similar, but in in IBM they manipulate people a bit more subtle way. Okay. Actually, if you look what is going, who 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 is uh, uh, have, who, who is in a better shape is rather scholar than IBM now. So Havel was again right. But uh, but in the power of powerless, you you have this comparison that capitalism and communism are two post-totalitarian systems. This is what Havel writes in this essay. What he is calling for, he's calling about what? Existential revolution. This is very similar to Tom, what Thomas Masaryk was saying. Thomas Masaryk was asking for revolution of hearts and minds. It's not that I'm giving you now the answer that let's do the existential revolution, of course. But the, but the idea was uh, actually that what you have to do, and my friend told it already, and you gave the example of it by your lives, by your revolution of hearts and minds, because this is exactly what you did, uh, was we work with the people, in the people, and this, this, this always be a political philosophy of any social change. This, will, this did not change and never changed from the times of you know humanity and will never change okay of course at at uh, at least uh, at, at when we will gonna have humanity and and, and, and and people and this gonna be the problem of social change post social post democratic whatever <coughs> and uh, and like so so don't expect any other message than the message that was actual when Havel wrote the text. It's a question of job, of working, of making an effort, of matching people like we matched and we are matching inside, okay? No Facebook, no Twitter, nothing else. Like, no Twitter but Havel, okay? That's, that's, that's my answer. Well, well, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the thing is that you know the difference difference in 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 seventies and eighties, as I remember that was that all these dissidents and Howell himself, most of the energy we spend was to defend our own dignity somehow i mean to 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 live actually outside of the system because this was the only way how to survive in in your to save your dignity and and to to feel like a human being much it was much more energy put into this than into any political things, thinking. Um, and then, then how we were surprised actually in 89 uh, having this experience, but we were not prepared to change, I mean, for these changes so much. I mean, and it was a big question of how much should we take part in the politics and in the changes in a, as a political animals. And how was exam exactly the, a, a, another exception because it took the responsibility. But the fact is that uh, when I, I, I see two problems in this, all these movements, so I sympathize very much as you do. I mean, um, first of all, I mean, which, with those which I sympathize with are mostly leftist, but you have also right-wing uh, actually movements or, or um, pretty dangerous. And even the lost leftists are sometimes not so innocent. If you if you look at the Spain and this new uh, Podemos uh, party, well, some of their ideas are pretty scary for me, uh, like out of NATO, actually out of Euro, and whatever. I mean, it's just it's not. If I if I may just small advice, this is why I I mentioned left only one time. 
saying that uh, we need to have a division, a kind of a conflict, like something which will be like a choice, not just one correct version and everything yeah. against is incorrect. I don't, I'm not leftist in a sense that I'm a, I'm a fetishist of the word left. I'm, I'm trying to support some kind of attitudes. Um, if they are leftists, then I'm leftist. If they are not, if they are not leftists, then I don't give a shit about it, about the word left. I mean, you can call me whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so, because I know many people who are thinking mostly about this word left, and like, and I checking other people if they are leftist enough, and it takes all their time, so they don't do nothing with the people and other things. I don't want to be like that. I don't want also my yeah. comrades to be like that. <laughs> comrades is a good word. I mean. Uh, um, uh, Yes, but what do you think? I mean, I, yeah. you live also in Italy, and, and you, so you see, I mean, it could, it could be from good intentions to uh, pretty big crowds, which I would be sometimes scared of. <laughs> Listen. So, to turn back to our previous regime and the situation now, I find somehow, when I mentioned post-democracy, so my thinking was that we, in our part of the world, generally, uh, we went from dictatorship to post-democracy without this period of democracy. And now I try to explain, because it's very interesting for me, this discussion about left and right than the need. And I agree. Uh, there is an Italian philosopher who has written a very nice book about it, left, left and right, Norberto Bobbio. And I think that what he's saying is still very important and very true. When he tries to define what is right and what is left, he takes, uh, he takes uh, let's say, three elements. He, he, he's, first of all, he's referred to philosophers like Rousseau and Nietzsche, and saying that according to Rousseau, um, we are or equal, so he's dealing with equality and inequality. We are all equal, but it's, you know, what happened after that made us unequal. And Nietzsche is saying the contrary somehow. We are unequal, but Christianity and, 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 and all what happened that's made us uh, equal, tries to make us equal. So he's putting the question, are we equal, equal or unequal? And he say, his answer is, we are both equal and unequal. And now he, he combines these two uh, categories with freedom. And when he tries to define the systems that we have experienced, he's, he's uh, simplifi simplifying it. Uh, idea is that extreme left means uh, equality plus lack of freedom. Extreme right is inequality plus lack of freedom. So if we combine inequality with freedom and equality with freedom, we will have center left, which is equality plus freedom and center right. Inequality, that means competition, that means individuality, egoism maybe, and, lack, and freedom. Now the pendulum in my view, in our countries, went too much from this extreme left, equality plus lack of freedom, very quickly to inequality plus lack of freedom, which means this power of oligarchs, this post-democracy. And I find two elements why we went so quickly in that direction. Two reasons. One is because we didn't have a democracy in between, to develop the immunity, a critical spirit, etc., etc., civil society. And we, we were very, very easy, easy, we could take very easy the neoliberalism as an ideology somehow. And so the new man in our, uh, in our countries became, in Albania for instance, Berlusconi. So he was the ideal of capitalism, to get richer and richer. And we have built this system. When you said Berlusconi, something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we are. So, <laughs> be sure we are not. Now, I think that 
One reason is the past, and another reason is because what happened in the West, even the West. Uh, so I'm very critical about the, the, the world transition. More time comes and more, more, more critical I am about the world transition. Uh, why? Because uh, the transition was something like as if we were on this other side, of the, on this side of the river, of the river, and we had it, we had to cross the desert. Some say the desert to go to the paradise, which was the west. But it was not the case because the west <coughs> was a train moving somehow itself. The west was moving; it was not a fixed point. So, and the movement of the west, in my view. And the tra it's a, it was was uh, not so was going too far in this towards this post democracy. So we imitate this, and that's why uh, we went too far too far uh, on the right, let's say. And I agree that we don't have two par a party of the left, and that we need a left in the sense that we need <coughs> we need to turn back to to the social, let's say. I mentioned before the social. And I'm, what I mean with that is uh, there are studies now. I, I, I very much like this economist of, of happiness, I don't know, somehow, uh, who have made some studies, in, especially in America and in Britain, about how people feel. You were asked before how people feel. And what is uh, paradoxical for them, and needs to be explained, is that in spite that in America the salaries, the growth is increasing, uh, the happiness is decreasing since, uh, since the, 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 the 70s. If you measure the happiness with only the income and the growth, then to, to reach the point of the year 70s in America, according to them, uh, America needs to have the growth of China, which is impossible. Why? Because happiness is not only linked with money, but happiness <coughs> is linked even with what they call the Italian say beni relazionali, relationship. So the goods coming from relationships, from the fact that we are not only egoistic uh, uh, beings, but we are we are uh, altruistic beings as well in our nature. So the, 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 that you cannot, uh, let's say, to put it simply, you cannot buy friendship and love with money. So we need to turn, and, and the good of the relationships is decreasing. The trust in institutions is decreasing. And that's why, uh, it's important to turn back to, 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 the, to, to the relationship between people. And now it comes the problems of the market. Why of the market? Because the market is very much pushing for its own interests in a sort of a visual circle that more you feel alone, more you need goods to fulfill your loneliness, and more you uh, need these goods, you should more work to earn the money uh, to, to, to buy these goods. And, and this is a vicious circle of the market that has produced even the inequality we are. So, so how to change this is for me is a big, big challenge. And that's why I'm very happy to, to see them, because I am uh, somehow a generation of pessimists. I consider myself a pessimist. And one of the ways, I think, to, to change this is to go to our, to, to our nature, as human beings, and to one thing which is very important in our nature. So we have, all animals have a sense of adaptations, and we as human beings have very much this sense of adaptation, somehow to adapt ourselves to, to. so when, when I was in jail, I remember for the day I, I went and I, I somehow, uh, they undressed you from the civil courts and then you had to take this 
dress, yes. stripes, stripes. Yeah. stripes, go to the bath, to make the bath, and then come out with this dress. And you felt clean? No, what I even say is that, so I undress myself, I dress this, and uh, in the same time I had these two feelings somehow, which, which, which were following my, my <coughs> life. In one way, I, we, we had no mirrors there, but you could have windows, and so you, you know that in a window you can... And so I just, I want to see myself in this window, how I look, you know, so I wanted to look nice, you know, with this dress. So I tried to adapt myself to this situation, but in the same time, I always refuse this dress, this is not mine, it's not me, so it's will come a time, so... <coughs> now, what I, think, what I want to say is that we have this sense of adaptation, but as human beings, only as human beings, we have what the psychologist uh, calls the sense of possibility. That we can change, that we can create projects to change things. And now, the, in my view, what I am experiencing, even in Italy, the pressure of the market, the pressure of the power, is very much pushing people to adapt themselves to, to the system. And the sense of possibility, which should be somehow, uh, it's, it's very suffocated. And it starts from the school, I think. Since the school people are prepared to, 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 to adapt, so you are prepared for, for, to work for, for, for this market, for this way. And second thing in the school that it's, I find problematic to come to the point of sociability is that very often we are, we are educated with the competition to be the best of the class, to, to compete and not to work together, not to, 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 be, to be much more uh, somehow not, not with the spirit of competition, but with the spirit of, 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 of uh, collaboration, of working together. And I think it's uh, wrong to say that, that so of course, I, I, I appreciate very much individualism uh, as a way of liberation of human being, but in the sense time we should, go, should not go too far when a sack of potatoes becomes a sack only a sack of potatoes, as Bauman puts it somehow, but we need a synergy, and I, I very much like, we need, to, we need to live with both of them. And, uh, and that's why I think the pendulum should go, should, should swing to the, to, the, to the other side. It's time for the, the pendulum to swing to more relationships, more, 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 more uh, collaboration, more, more altruism, more solidarity, and as I did put in a word, uh, to socialize our responsibilities somehow. Well, I, I just, um, look, what, um, um, I have a question, but I, I, first of all, I have to um, comment a little bit or to say something. I mean, in, uh, what the difference between what I think is today and what was the past in 89, as we remember this day, was uh, there were huge crowds on the streets, like in Hungary two weeks ago. But what was typical for this crowd, they were, they were, on, the, they were on the squares, uh, where people could gather, and it was kind of an abstract gathering in a sense. It, wasn't, it was against communism, but it was in a place which were kind of a common, big square. And I think it was very important because then the, the, the definition and the, de the demand was put in the place which was political in sense, as a square. Uh, and from that, then, of course, regime collapsed and the political parties just uh, uh, started to exist and, and so on and so on. I mean, uh, and I think that the, that process was, even we didn't know it quite well, but, what, but, but the fact that it was impersonal in some sense, it was against communism, and actually, we, of course, we shouted some names, whatever, but it was, it was kind of a more abstract about the system. In Slovakia now these days happened a thing, and we all hate oligarchs, I agree with you, I mean, and I think many people do, in our world actually, in this neoliberal world we live in. In Slovakia happened that a uh, week ago there was a big scandal with some healthcare system, whatever, and the, the, the Speaker of Parliament who, um, who was thought to be oligarch, 
responsible for all, all these, all these, uh, you know, corrupt, corruption in, in healthcare system, and he became rich of that. Uh, so the, the politician, political opposition started to, to organize a demonstration in front of his house, which was a very luxury house, about 500 people. A couple of days later, next, uh, the speaker resigned, which I'm not sorry for him at all. I think he deserved <laughs> much earlier to resign. But, but what I'm a little bit nervous about is that it wasn't a demonstration against the system, it was a demonstration in front of the house against one guy, oligarch, whatever. And it worked. Uh, so I, I, he became scared. And I think many of them are scared that the crowds could come to their house to break their walls and just to start to, you know, beat them, whatever. And I think the mood sometimes is like that. But I'm a little bit worried, and, uh, uh, because you, this can be, go out of control completely, and you will, know, you will have no control about that at all then. So my question from this is, actually, do you think that you can organize a social movements based on, on dissatisfied, I mean, people who are not satisfied with us, who are angry, and who, are, who are frustrated, to organize them in a positive way, which will not break, I mean, the society itself, or the, at least we, what we can say, talk about still, whatever post-democracy or democracy, it's still represented by political parties, which they are the only tool how you can um, change the system still. We, you may have uh, the other ideas, but my question is, do you agree that all these demonstrations, <laughs> movements, which are all around the world, and until now they most of them actually disappeared because they had no leaders and they had no political ideas to, to step into the system and to be part of that, uh, to change it from inside. So what do you think about this? Uh, do you believe that, that you have to be part of the system to change it? Or you think it's better to go against it, to destroy it, or to just go to and to demonstrate against the villas of oligarchs? What do you think, how it should be changed? Tell them, tell them. <laughs> <coughs> Of course, the system uh, consists most of the time uh, from people. I mean, like, yeah, maybe in the future there will be a computerized government, possible, but... Um, you mean like machines will control us? Mm, there are a lot of examples in the books already. I mean, like, you can read about such things. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't consider myself uh, an important so uh, I, I, I'm one of uh, one of the crowd. I mean, like it's not the question for me if I will be uh, part of the system or not. Uh, but uh, but I, yeah, I, I think that in a sense somehow we will be part of the system. But this is I I I, I, I don't feel that this division is uh, the most important because because people uh, will. Uh, they modify the system somehow, then they will get in the system, then the other people will modify the system uh, further. So I mean like, uh, of course the power will be somewhere at certain times. And what is really important that uh, even the power and even the people should not use violence. I think it's, yeah, what you thought about it, you can lo lose control and uh, this is the worst worst thing I can, uh, I think, can happen to uh, a certain society uh, in a way. And actually, if you see uh, from the statistical uh, point of view, then you can conclude uh, that uh, non-violent uh, resistance is more, is more successful, uh, actually, uh, than the violent resistance. And yeah, and... Uh, uh, yeah, of course, I think we can uh, agree in this uh, easily that uh, we are against uh, violence. Uh, 
Actually, tomorrow, today, there will be uh, almost 30 demonstrations in Hungary uh, as a follow-up for the recent demonstrations. Uh, we don't know yet how big they will be. Uh, my gut feeling is like uh, is that the that there will be a big demonstration actually in Budapest, and there will be uh, certain demonstrations actually around Europe. Uh, uh, the dissidents, actually, which we have a lot uh, currently, uh, 30 or, or 300,000 people in the United Kingdom or so. Uh, and partly as a result of our current government actions. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I think the the answer is in your question uh, somehow. But the, the the main thing is, and what you I felt you talked about, or or just uh, uh, you went around one important thing, which is trust. Trust uh, in. Uh, the other people and trust in the political system, trust in the politicians, trust in politics. Uh, I think we have none, none of these currently, uh, or, or, or a sm too, too small amount. If you uh, talk about an egoistic society, the, the, this means actually the lack of trust to other people. Okay, I can handle it myself. I, I, I won't trust you because, uh, yeah, and the cooperation, no, no way. Maybe, yeah, yeah, we can, we can, yeah, compete. But uh, for cooperation, you need trust. And so, yeah, yeah, these notions are just notions. I know that this is not too concrete. But somehow, I think, uh, yeah, those people who are in the public, who are, yeah, because power lies not just in the, in, in the political power, but if you are representing a case, if you are representing uh, an idea in the media, for example, then there is the power you have influencing other people's mind. And I think somehow this, uh, this, this, will, this should arrive and this should go in the direction of trust. Because we did not trust our uh, institutions, we did not trust, I mean like the Hungarian society, did not care about the uh, uh, checks and balances. Oh, Orban tries to destroy, oh, yeah, let them do that. Hmm. Did, did, did it do any good for us recently? No, it did not much. I mean, it did, it, it did some, but it was not visible. We, these are not just uh, structures, these we, we and, and our, I think, yeah, the, the, our task, the intelligence here with the sweaters, yeah? So it's like we need to interpret these political institutions as well, and not just for us. I mean, like uh, sitting uh, here, a couple uh, hundred people listening to us. This is not enough. What is actually, I mean, what is the topic of the demonstrations today? I mean, if the internet taxes are not anymore in... in, uh -huh. in uh, yeah. Its name is Rage, Public Rage. Public Rage. Yes, actually, there are certain activist communities in uh, uh, Budapest. I mean, like, uh, there are certain parts of the activist community. Uh, I'm not uh, organizing, unfortunately, to today's demonstrations. Uh, we organized around five demonstrations in two weeks, and, well, it was a little bit too exhausting as well, but this is not the question. The question is that uh, we will see what will happen today. I. <coughs> I, I do fear and I do hope uh, about today. I mean, like, I hope that everything uh, will be peaceful because, as I told you recently, that I think it's one of the most important questions regarding the current situation. On the other hand, I hope that there will be a lot of people. And what I feel and what I told you already, I, I see a lot of new people. And this was the main thing, I think, in the internet demonstrations, not the internet text, and not that it was withdrawn, but it was, yeah, if, if it was great that it was a success. But that those people who were not interested before in anything, yeah. uh, they arrived and actually they were successful as well. I mean, like in this one case. Yeah. And uh, but well, to the day to, day to, day to overcome. Is, yes, sir. Well, it's day of rage is a little bit abstract. I mean, it's, well, okay. Um, we will see what what will happen to this yeah. evening. But, but so, so we'll like, so see when they come to you. <laughs> come to my house. How well, they can. I mean, <laughs> nothing to <laughs> steal. Um, uh, so the system. Being in or being out, 
Slavic. Um, there are so many points that um, just like the you know the the, 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 the biography of Havel is the, the name is keep it short. Yes, I mean like I, in, in American it's from the castle and back because you know stupid Americans they always have to have like a story and like fairy tale and they, they did not want to have the real title keep it short. So tell me keep it short at some certain point. But first of all, uh, okay, system doesn't exist anymore in the same sense as it existed before when you had this clear division that uh, that we were hearing about then one word can change a lot one word can trigger uh, you know reaction and mobilize people that from this point of view you are right that this is easy of course however i don't want to neglect all the hard obstacles from the time of communism i don't you know I, I'm, I was too young to do anything like i, I was nine when 1989 was you know it happened but uh, but like you in, in, when you are talking seriously about the system you are already inside included in it okay uh, in this sense the system is open and it is closing itself by you, adding you as another commodity to the market. If you are not, uh, like in the sense that, uh, like if before in the 60s provocation could work, okay, now provocation is the most conservative convention of the system. The most stupid MTV or something are based on the provocation convention, okay, or stupid reality shows or whatever, okay, so it doesn't work that way anymore, forget it. Forget also about political parties. I'm sorry, Martin. I, I'm sure that you will yeah. be disappointed, but we will not be disappointed. So you said that oh, this is only true. This is not. Political parties were invented some time ago, not so much time ago, a hundred years more or less, and will not be a synonym of democracy and never were a synonym of democracy. They worked, but they don't work anymore. And it's so obvious that there is the difference between them is disappearing. Okay, the the the, the way how they can change something it's less and less efficient. Okay, why? For the simple, most simple reason that economy is globalized, politics is not globalized, which means that any, you know minister responsible for economy will not be sovereign inside the state because financial market rate agencies will tell him what to do. Change, hire your taxes, you're going to see next day what's going to happen to your deficit. Okay? That's the message. So you cannot really, you're not sovereign anymore. Political parties in this sense cannot do too much. Okay? So where the politics is now, if not between political parties? When, look when, you, when the law is changed, when it is changing, or who changed the law in last years. At least in Poland, the law is not negotiated between coalition or opposition. It is negotiated between government and coalitions of NGO. The last five reforms in Poland for seven years, the, the opposition just did not exist. They don't even write programs. Do your parties in your country write programs anymore? Have you seen something like they this? They try, but nobody reads them. They don't try in Poland anymore. I mean, and, and, it's, all, and they, it's more smart than to do it. Come on, it's a waste of time. No one will read it. They will not realize it. And um, so at least... Poles don't care about it. I'm sorry, you see? I was telling you the truth, and they, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Someone is hearing me, you know. Um, so, um, um, so, so the whatever, whatever you ch take as an example in Poland, and like we had like two real reforms by the government, pension reform. It was, you know, the, 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 the opposition did not say anything about it because they did not even know what to say. Uh, Leszek Walcerowicz, who was the main opponent of the government, is a member of NGO. He created NGO, not a political party. Okay, it's very symptomatic. We changed the law about narcotics. It was horrible. It's not only about narcotics. It was the uh, most conservative law, and thousands of thousands of people were sent every year to prison for the small amount of something, and then you get bandits, really. After a year in prison, what you get is a real criminal. Okay? This was a very important social issue. Then the law about women in politics, about parties, was 
also forced by us, not by political parties. Then 1% on culture and wars in Poland, which is a very important thing because there is a lot of political capital inside culture. <coughs> also was forced by us, not by any opposition. I cannot remember anything done by political parties except of one which has to do something because unfortunately has a government, so they are like this, but they have to do something, you know, this is the moment. So, so really, tr I mean, don't worry, Martin, but try to forget about political parties because they really don't work anymore. This was very interesting example by Norberto Bobbio that you found, but the, the the answer to Norberto Bobbio is very simple. I'm very surprised that, she, that he did not get it. The, the, because actually I disagree with him because he really believes that left is about equality. It's very simple to think about it, but he already inside the same bo this book uh, answered why it doesn't make sense. The simple answer to him is that equality of freedom could be the answer. <laughs> Like because it's uh, it's exactly about this. So in my point of view, if if all of us, women and men, heterosexuals, homosexuals, workers, and elites, will have the same uh, access to freedom, which means concrete things, which means mini material minimum to be a part of society, which means that you have money for your lawyer if you have a problem in, in your job, which means that you have money to meet someone else in a restaurant to be a part of society. This is, a, you know, this, this is an access to freedom. If it is more or less equal, then you have, let's say, democratic or leftist uh, shape of society. That would be my answer to, or like the rational answer to, to or leftist answer to, to Bobbio. Then when you, you mentioned, <coughs> you mentioned necessity. Okay, my, 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 my idea of the left is about making people a subject of their, of their own life. On, in, in, in front of the state, Catholic Church in Poland, which is a second government, or a first government, really. Uh, don't forget that Poland is still a country, uh, probably together with Albania and Russia, uh, uh, which is very good company, of course. I'm, I'm talking about Albania, not Russia. Uh, there is no sexual education in schools. There is no, um, there is the strictest, the most strict anti-abortion law. There is no, and you know, contraception refund. Forget it. There is not same-sex union law. Polish law doesn't recognize homosexuals. They just don't exist in Poland. And um, and and even in vitro is too controversial to have any law. This is unregulated question in Poland. You can you can. You, after you forget about political parties, you can open a clinic in Poland, do the in vitro the way you want, okay, and and you're gonna be legitimized to do it, okay. This is this is we have a vacuum, this a law vacuum regarding this thing because they tried to do it and really opposition and coalition are too conservative to have any law about it. So th this is another answer to the political parties. Uh, sorry, okay, I mean. Uh, <coughs> I feel like Keep a short. Short. I mean, what, do we, what do you think about that? I mean, um, still, yes, you can you can make a pressure by NGOs on political parties, but those who change the law, which actually change the life, well, it still has to be done through political parties and and, and parliament. So, I mean, you tell you tell me that this is not needed. Check it first. If they really yeah, change the law. Well, no, they did. Really? Give me three examples from your country. I don't know your country, but I'm more or less, I think it's well, especially similar. Especially in, in Czech Republic, of course they did. Un, it, under the pressure of NGOs, <coughs> they changed the law about marijuana. They so, did it. I, I'm sorry, this is an example of the necessity of political parties or not? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, how can you... I mean, I, I, I just... Uh, well, you need a law to... I mean... And a rule of law is still, I mean, idea I, I somehow believe in still. No, but the rule of law, you know, those guys are uh, defending the rule of law and not Orban and not all, all, also those suckers from the, you know, opposition. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the opposition yeah. in Hungary is, yes, is but, not very... Yes, but that's, that's <coughs> how they should be either replaced 
Well, I just, well, this, this is an anarchistic idea. It's not anarchistic, it's a realistic idea, come on. Well, it's just it's... Che check what is going on in your own country or in my okay, country. Okay, so what do you, you think? Wanna... I mean, I'm convinced. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, no. As I said, I, as you said, I live in Italy, and there is an attempt somehow. So it's a very problematic question, this inside the system or outside the system. It reminds me of Rossellini when he, in the oldest age, he gave the last interview and he was speaking about the system, Hollywood system, and he said somehow the idea that through the system I could get uh, much money to kick the system. So, <laughs> so it's a paradoxical in a way. So you have to be inside and outside the system in, in a way. And uh, you know that in Italy there is this movement of Pepe Grillo, Gr Grillo movement, which is a typical... Five stars? How is it? Five stars. Yeah. Cinque Stelle. Which is a typical anti-system movement. So their slogan, the, the idea is, they are not a party, <coughs> they are not a party, they are a movement. And uh, what they say is that this political class, the le le left and right, are the same somehow, representative of, let's say, these oligarchs in a, in a way. They accuse the medias as their instruments <coughs> being somehow uh, ownership, somehow Benetton is one, or, or some, are, some have a, rep a Republica, some have a Correa de la Sera somehow, and the televisions as well. And they try to challenge this they are saying you should go home, all, and Grillo is putting it in a way that's saying that we, it's, we are going to take 99% or something like that. But in fact they failed in the last elections. Now what, what I think about it, they have a lot of points which I sympathize in a way. For instance, they, uh, uh, as far as politicians, the career of politicians is concerned, they say you should not be all the time a politician. Why? You should be all your life a politician. You, we should change the law that uh, a deputy parliament could be only eight years. And after eight years, he is a citizen who is going to make his own job. For instance, one of their there, and they try to see to put the internet as the way to vote for people, as this this is making. So they have this kind of, of stuff. The problem is that at the end, they cannot neglect freedom. And freedom is very important. Freedom to to choose. Freedom to vote. And when it comes to freedom to vote. The problem is that in once in, uh, they cannot get 100%. There are others who think differently. There are others who think differently. And what are you going to do with others who think differently? Are you going to eliminate them, to put them in jail? Or, to, or you have to live together with them, even with the oligarch you mentioned. He has his own rights. <coughs> and, uh, and this is the weak point of, of Grillo's movement. Uh, people were very much afraid even of him. He considered that it was a reaction of, of the system against him. It was a reaction of people of people who have no uh, courage and uh, who don't dare to change, to, to jump into, into a new thing. But this is human as well, somehow, and you have to respect it. I think very much that this depends on the context, and if you want to... Uh, so, my idea is that, first of all, we should, we're speaking of the pendulum, keep the pendulum in the area of freedom, first of all. You cannot jump, go out of the area of freedom, okay. first, and respect of human rights and uh, against violence and, 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 and so on. And then I think it's very important uh, <coughs> so you made an equality of freedom, freedom, equality of freedom, but uh, they say that you cannot be equal without, you cannot be free without being equal because, you know, these oligarchs are not, we are not equal with the oligarchs because they are rich. So this, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult, uh, it's a difficult. But, so in my view, in my view, 
we have to combine pressure with education, with bringing new values, uh, with changing. We have to change. But how to change it when people react against change? For instance, I am, or those who think, like Grillo, that uh, maybe we should uh, make more sociable our cities. We should uh, somehow try to eliminate the cars and, and to make public spaces more, 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 more affordable by people and to be together. I, I agree very much with the idea that we should not uh, um, damage more the planet with with all what the market is doing and we should stop it and, uh, and there are a lot of things that are in common now and are in, in, in are somehow circulating among uh, among uh, among people how to transform them into into so into a change of system if you want uh, uh, that's it's 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 a, it's a question mark. I, I think uh, I, I believe in the vote. I believe that uh, in movements who can create put pressure to the parties. For instance, Grillo has influenced very much that the parties uh, include some of his his. Uh, uh, ideas in, for instance, the, to diminish the salaries of the politicians, and etc., etc. Et um, but Grillo himself is saying we don't enter into the system because the system will corrupt us. So they want to to put to to keep clear, let's say, their 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 vision, etc., etc. And in this sense, I have I think that we should make a distinction between politicians and politics as the art of, let's say, possible. And, and, and the idealist, and we are, it was speaking, spoken yesterday and here today about literature, about art, about uh, civil society, and so on. We should uh, keep uh, in the area of freedom all these this, uh, elements in order, to, in order to transform the society. But it's not easy. Sometimes uh, if the problems are accumulated, you can see the violence then bursting. And the violence very often is not bringing to, to freedom, but to chaos, unfortunately. And sometimes the problems, uh, when the problems are accumulated, and I didn't speak here, but uh, why I am an outsider, a double outsider, but uh, just to make it short, very often in order to resolve the problem, you, you, you find an enemy. For instance, in the Balkans, our, our, our main uh, way to resolve the problems is to find an enemy. Now we have found the Serbs, for instance, in Albania, and all, all problems, uh, the internal problems are resolved because we are united against the enemy. And in this sense, I, I'm, I'm similar to be, uh, to, to turn back to the point, us and them, or us and me and others, to be outsider means somehow, and double outsider in this sense of mine, it's uh, because uh, it's a Serbian, Serbian <coughs> anthropologist and uh, who has studied uh, the role of the elites in, in creating nationalism during the 19th century. And he, he speaks about the syndrome of, of the double insider. A double insider, he's, he means uh, those historians, anthropologists, uh, ethnologists uh, who uh, felt themselves uh, part of a group who had to defend the interests of the big group they belonged to somehow. So this, uh, they are. That's why they are double inside, uh, insiders, parts of the small group and part of the big group they defend, uh, saying that he's vit victim of another group. So <coughs> this is prevailing even now in, in our countries, unfortunately, in the sense that our elites still, uh, our political elites and, 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 and the many intellectuals still have this syndrome of being double insiders, so in, uh, that, that defend the, the interests of their big, bigger group somehow, through nationalism and so in, in this sense it's very important to be outsider and that's why to, to attack this this and it has to do even with the system in a way you, somehow we need people who are out of the system who attack the system and and then the dynamic of all of that can bring change somehow um, well um, look I mean um, we have one example when um, the political system although it was totally uh, corrupted, or, I mean, the communist system, <laughs> it was just, uh, Václav Havel was elected a president 
of Czechoslovakia in December 1989 by all the parliament who were all communists there, from the old regime. So the pressure of the street just then, probably some <coughs> negotiations with whatever, they just, just voted for the, for the completely different person from Husak to, to Havel. So. Okay, okay. Who elected Havel? Tell me. Well, that's, well, communists, that's a question. Com communists in, in the parliament, who forced them? Thousands, thousands of people. Who was the first against the political parties and wrote it thousand times? Václav Havel. Yes. Well, but my point is that you still needed this, this members of parliament Havel to be elected in president. It's not that I want to, to I don't want to depoliticize you in, because it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. I, I, actually, I partly agree with Martin. I mean, because I don't want like to tell you, forget about politics, which very often means politics means political parties. If you can do something inside the political parties, because there are some like islands of possibility, let's say, then of course do it. It's not that political parties are always bad and we shouldn't think, we shouldn't, when we see political party, we should run away. It's not, it's not like this. The problem with political parties, that with the party systems, that they are less and less efficient. Probably sure. it's gonna go this way. Okay, and all the examples that we have are that they do something when they are forced to do something. Okay, they don't do anything and they don't invent any ideas. They don't. They don't. Wanna, they don't really. They don't want to take a risk. Okay, before politics looked like this. There were different political actors, political parties. They had different agendas. They were entering the public sphere showing their agenda in a quarrel, in an argument, and then people could choose, okay? What they do now? They, before they enter the, the public sphere, because, be, before they say something, they want already to check what do you think by public polls, you know, political marketing, everything. Most of their money they spent on it, on, you know, focus surveys and everything. Check, check the board budgets. They do, mostly they do it like this. So, then, so they check first, then they create their message, they come, and they tell you what you already think, okay? But no on view, I respect you strongly, but none of you is born with your ideas about GMO, climate change, or taxes, or something. You get your ideas when you see them, and you see them when they are in a public sphere, but they don't deliver you anymore. They reproduce what you already know. This is why the substance is disappearing from the public sphere. This is very, this is very, this is very problematic. So if you can do it, do. If you cannot do it, don't like fix your mind on political parties because maybe they're gonna disappear. But may I make like, a question? I agree may I make a question? question. <laughs> I this and I agree with you completely. I mean, it's you just agree I, with I, me I don't because want I agree with you. Right. Well, no, you wanted to ask, and no, my just, question is. I stop you for for yeah. a second. I just forgot the public to ask the questions. I mean, I'm, I was so much involved in that debate. So. You just, uh, there is a, but you still have the question. No, my question is that I, strong, I, I believe that you need right and left, as you said, as far as I understood. But how should they be represented then? First, how you, do you think? first you, you need the difference. How they will be represented? And how well, could... Uh, whatever, if they Because be, this is the problem of, of Grillo. He is somehow trans, transversal movement. It's, it's, they, some say he is representing the right, some say he is representing the left. And, 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 uh, and what, where is the place of the others then? It's, actually, it's a question actually, mark. Okay, and, okay, and then it's how can it be? Take this, take this example of 1989. Of, there were no political parties that made this change here. It, there, there were the people who created or supported the representation because the representation uh, formed themselves against the party and look uh, and, and ask yourself a question Havel was elected four times never in the in the common election never by the ordinary people ask yourself if for the second third fourth time really Havel will be elected all the dissidents disappeared from Polish politics after a few years after 1989. I can give you examples of the purest, most honest, beautiful people, because a lot of 
the people, well, some of the people who went to the dissident movement went very crazy, because somehow you had to be crazy to change your life to the way and like you know put put everything against everything against the reality. Okay, it, it, you needed really big brave. Sometimes it meant that you're crazy, and we have some you know a lot of examples of it. But other people were just so honest that they, you know, by their stomachs. They couldn't agree to what they saw around. Those people, all of them, disappeared from the from the party politics uh, because they were not cynical enough to agree to the party political process that they had already. Draw your conclusions from it. <laughs> One remark is that yes, uh, but then you know, I mean, the communist system when the hundreds of thousands of people came to the squares. Well, the system was different in that right. they, they started to be so scared of, this, of these crowds that they just collapsed. Well, if you have hundreds of thousands of people now in... Uh, well, in, in Budapest, I don't think... You can't hug them, so my I don't know. Again, uh, Orban, well, I mean, you don't need to... No, you, it's, you, you, said, you start to tell I think, the truth. Yeah, you know, and I, think, uh, I think that, uh, you know, Orban will not disappear. <laughs> He'll just stay in the power. So it's different, the system is different than... Well, but... There was a question. Uh, we should we should give the, the floor to the public because it's just uh, we are too <coughs> much. Is there any mic? The mics are gone, all of them, because somebody is very pissed off. <laughs> um, I had two questions really. Uh, one, I guess, is a little provocative. It's about what you said. Uh, Can you sorry? It? Um, I'm Matthew Cruikshank from Eurozine. I'm the editor of Times Talk. Um, the first question is a little bit provocative. It's uh, going back to what Mr. Shemechka said about uh, the sort of protest outside a politician's house. Uh, and I kind of thought, actually, we see all these examples of where people use a public position for private gain with impunity, or more or less with impunity. Uh, I wonder actually if it isn't to some extent useful actually to know that if you are going to use a public position for private gain that you will as a private individual have to suffer for or at least take responsibility for what you've done. done. Um, and I also thought about the sort of uh, uh, concerns that you had about lack of control then, how that could uh, go out of control. And I kind of think um, some of the big problems with uh, protests nowadays are that they are too controlled. You have your uh, agreed protest zones, you have uh, people who are actually involved because of this career aspect, because of individual ambition. And actually maybe to have real change you need to have a certain lack of control perhaps, to have a certain dynamic in there. That would be the first question, which is a little bit more provocative. Um, the second question is going back to what we've been sort of saying about party politics, about career politics. Um, and I mean, first of all, I'd say uh, I think maybe one of the big problems here is that there's been a disconnection with the root basis. So you, you have uh, political machines which are aiming for votes, at least in the cases of the mainstream parties, and that means that actually they're aiming for the centre ground wherever that is in their own countries, and they're not connected with the reasons they came to exist in the first place, which was obviously as a result of some form of movement which had some problem it wanted to resolve. Um, but if we're looking at career politics, I would ask, uh, in your case, um, Actually, if that could not be a problem, having these short-term uh, representative periods, if, um, if people would not always then have their minds on the career after politics, if there wouldn't be subsequent employment always there on one side when they think about the actions they take as a politician. Um, and on the other hand, I was thinking as regards party politics, and I was wondering actually, if you think it's possible to avoid that, if people don't automatically always form into some sort of blocks of uh, interests or at least connections between their different interests and if that isn't something which then always consolidates over time and if it's possible to avoid that even happening. Uh, those would be my two questions or I suppose the last questions are a bit more mixed but uh, the first question at least and then these questions about career politics and party politics afterwards. 
Um, well, we, we may collect it. I mean, has, uh, is there anybody? Uh, yes, there is. A, there is another. Another. <laughs> another. Uh, Haris Pašović, East West Sarajevo. Uh, so it seems uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, uh, the observation that uh, uh, social um, uh, protest is difficult to turn into social movement, and also a notion about uh, a new left. So uh, it seems that the, the, the conservatives or ultra conservatives, uh, they are very clear in their policy. Uh, they say. Traditional family, no abortion, no gays, no Jews, no Muslims. Um, I mean, they are very clear, they say, and they do what they say. Yeah? Um, they have also very clear and powerful representation. They are represented by God, by uh, priests, by polit uh, politicians. They have their NGOs, and they have uh, the leaders of their NGOs. Um, and um, they have a a very solid funding coming from church and businesses. Uh, concerning the new left, um, it doesn't seem that at the moment there is a clear policy of the new left. Uh, we, we feel the need for, for, for it, but it doesn't, doesn't really seem to be as clear as the policy of the conser uh, conservatives. And because of that clarity, conservatives are international, they are very well connected, they agree about all these things. Um, also, it doesn't seem clear who represents the new left. But my question is, who funds the new left? Jews, of course. <laughs> okay, so, uh, is there another another question somewhere? Do I see any hands? <coughs> yeah, there is. Um, Mitchell Cohen from the City University of New York. You know, when I l listen to your conversation today, um, um, and, and coming from a representative democracy which has s substantial troubles of its own right now. Um, I, 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 I was constantly struck by um, the, until the tail end, the, the avoidance of the discussion of the question of representation. It's not enough to just say representation. In, in, in fact, um, the idea of representative democracy um, and the health of political parties, has had, there's a symbiotic relationship between them since the 18th century, it, it, Britain being the perhaps the best example, um, and um, and the word representation has different meanings, and has also been debated in significant ways, from Edmund Burke to John Stuart Mill. Um, it, th does it mean that rep does representation mean that you take the temperature, the political temperature of your constituents, or does it mean that you function as a kind of trustee because most of your constituents are? not going to go home after work and, and study tax bills, um, which is your job. Um, uh, so, so and, 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 and tied to that is, is, is in a way, and uh, um, one thing that struck me is the absence of the question of what it means to have self-government. Because what it means to have self-government is, is tied to um, a representative democracy, uh, re responding to the deficiencies of representative democracy. Um, uh, p political parties have been an essential part of representative democracy. You're, you're absolutely correct that they've been hollowed out and in some ways um, become more of electoral machines than, uh, than, than, than political movements. Uh, but nonetheless, what is the level of self-government? How is that actually institutionalized? I'm sorry, I'm speaking as a, like a political scientist, which is unfortunately or fortunately what, what I am. Um, one has to talk about these, existen these, these institutional questions, not only existential questions and, and, and the desire to re rebel against bad politicians. Um, where I come from, there have been constant movements to say politicians should be in office only a limited amount of time, which sounds very appealing. And then who's there for 20 years and, know, and knows everything about everything? The, the lobbyists who are working for corporations. Uh, and so the idea that parties need to be counterbalances either to economic forces or 
to uh, the lobbies working for them but, but, but becomes a very real question. I, I sometimes have the feeling, and I'll end it with this, um, I, I had the good fortune of being in parts of your part of the world during 89 and after. And, um, and the idea of a civil society was proclaimed against suffocating abuse of regimes, and then you got slapped by the back of the invisible hand. Um, w without um, having, and I shouldn't, maybe I'm, I'm being unfair because I, I don't read the literature f from here, without um, a sufficient question of, 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 of what, are the, what are successful institutions of democracy. And um, yeah, running political parties is, 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 can be really boring. Um, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, it's not. It's not um, um, as, as dramatic as, as certain political gestures. But it's necessary for the health and survival of a political system, which is tied to the level of self-government. And after being slapped by the back of the invisible hand, I, I get the impression from s some friends. Um, in, 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 um, that, that, well, what's our answer to solving the problem? Europe. But Europe itself is a very unresolved question if you want to ask the democratic question of what self-government means and what a citizenship, the, the citizens who take responsibility for each other. Uh, I'll stop there. Um, okay, so we go in the order. I mean, I, and I, I just uh, feel, I mean, kind of a, that I should say something about your question about this provocative question, uh, and again, I mean, it's 25 years ago. It was this huge crowd in the in on the square, and I, I was one of those who, well, we organized the, these these crowds, and we have constantly. I mean, the biggest. I mean, you know, the Velvet Revolution as as <coughs> as a title. Well, it didn't come from you know the idea so that we are so nice. Uh, it, it came from fear. We were so scared of two things. Either that police would come and beat us with the army and whatever and kill us. The other was being scared of the crowd that you needed just a single moment and the crowd could, could blow out to in, in anger and, 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 you know, hatred. So the, the, the velvet revolution, the idea of being velvet, being nice, was actually came from two big fears of, of uncontrolled or one controlled by regime and one uncontrolled hatred. So that's what I, I am a little bit careful about all this on, on the crowds, which are based on anger, uh, and which, which, which don't, which, which use their anger in a, in a very concrete detail, like coming in front of the, the very one human being, whoever it is, an asshole, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not abstract anymore. It's 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 clear hatred organized and put in front of the of somebody. And I think that's not about the system. Then it's all about anything else. So that's my worry. Um, but let's let's um, do the questions. I mean, I'm, there was a, this. I didn't quite well, but this career politics and and party politics. Well, it's a basic question. But what what do you think? I mean, I didn't. I, I can't put the question shortly, but, but you did listen. What, what do you think as the old veteran? Is it still worth? The old veteran? I tell you that you are the old veteran. <laughs> as an old veteran, sorry. No, listen, in, what, in this discussion, I think that we need movements. But movements like are like... Uh, the Italians say the period of innamoramento, the period, so to take, to speak of love, when we fall in love. It's this period, which is a, a period that we, uh, as if we just, we touch, touch uh, eternity somehow. <coughs> God, some say. But this is a period that has its own it's very necessary, but needs to be institutionalized in, let's say, a marriage, if I can use it. And this has to do very much uh, not to make the error the communists made and other totalitarian systems made, that they were thinking that there is not any gap between 
ideals and reality. So they, 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 that there is a gap between ideals and reality. We cannot fulfill this gap. When we are in the, fee, in the time of, of, of this uh, innamoramento, of this falling in love, we think that we can fulfill this gap. But then we see that the pros of, of marriage, of, I don't know, or not marriage, but let's say, it, uh, uh, end of this period, um, it's something else. But it's, it's normal. And we have to, 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 that's why I think that these movements, in a way or another way, should be institutionalized. And uh, maybe political parties, maybe a different sort of, of, but still need to be institutionalized and changing. And, there, and history has shown that could be different forms of being institutionalized. As far as the question of the, of the left, who will sponsor the left? I think it's a very important question. I think it's a very important question and I live in a, in a country which, as you know, was very close to Italy and when we tried to build the system, the new system, we took many, for very, very much Italian example. And what is Italian example was Berlusconism. And what is Berlusconism is the oligarch who, after creating his money, he created his media empire and then he jumped into politics. And he somehow neglected the so-called conflict of interest somehow. In Italy they say there were no, con no conflict of interest because all interests are in the same hands somehow. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, now, and uh, Umberto Eco called this, this mediatic regime so it's not, it was no more a regime we using police, but using medias. So the idea of who will sponsor the left, for me, it's linked very much with the idea of, no, just to, to, to resolve this conflict of interests somehow. And especially media, now media is maybe changed with the, with the internet, they, some say that the, we, with internet uh, we are somehow more free from these uh, medias who are controlled. I think yes and no because they can control even inter, in internet if they have the money and the power. But I think it's very important for me, I'm among those who uh, think that uh, we should very much stress to public television that we don't have more public television. In Albania, it's, for instance, it's, it's very weak. We have only private televisions in the American style and controlled by these oligarchs. So one of the things is uh, um, to, to make what I said before, the socialization of responsibilities, one of the things is just to resolve the problem of conflict of interest and maybe politicians uh, should not have and here is the system that we try to build, somehow a new system, politicians who cannot be in the same time uh, rich, very rich businessmen and media owners and stuff like that. And uh, in, in this sense, uh, then of course these examples of Obama is giving, if you find in the world uh, there are examples that we can pick up to build a new system without making a revolution. So there are things working, uh, for instance I am very much against publicity, for instance, as a manipulation of uh, the market makes to our, our, our uh, brain and, and, and if you go to, to Sweden you find laws that they don't allow, for instance, publicity for children uh, under 12 years old. And so you find a lot of examples of uh, uh, f like uh, as ecology is concerned. So I think that the left could be sponsorized by, 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 by people by people, by taxpayers, and I, I think that there is the, this is the new, the idea that we need more or less, uh, bigger or stronger state or, less, or, or weaker state in front of this market which is growing, and I am with the idea that we need uh, 
a stronger state, but not an authoritarian state, a state which controls somehow this. And if, if in this way the state can control the more complicated the market is and more great the market is, more we need to control it. And, uh, and uh, this can, uh, in this way we can find ways how to, 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 sponsor, to sponsor the left and to socialize the responsibilities. Um, well, this is a, I mean, that's, that's a good question because about the funding, because um, again, in the past, I, the dissidents had one big luxury. They had a lot of time to think and write. And, and I, had a, I, was a, I had a dream job as a stoker. I mean, I was working one in four days. And even that 24 hours, I really worked only three hours. The rest, I was just at home. So it was a dream job, and I was paid by a university professor. And I had, and I loved time, time. So actually, the system funded me somehow, if I take it now from this point of view. Uh, the question is now, I mean, who funds you? I mean, you, I mean, not only about money. But it's, also, it's also about, about how much time can you give to the social, I mean, to that, to thinking, writing, being active, because you also have some something to live from. Uh, first, may I get back to the representation question? Um, well, I, yeah, I, but I, I can I can arrive. It's a it's I, I really part arrive. Of that, but you can yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> and Do you know which is the only good system? A sound system. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there is a you know. Actually, this comes from graffiti or something like that. The only good system is a sound system. Probably, uh, says the audio files. I mean, like, okay, this was a joke. Uh, but to get back to the question of representation, I think that parties are uh, needed and they are, you know, they are useful because the power technique allows you to just interpret certain points uh, or, or certain amount of information and if you would like um, to make a representative democracy with 200 uh, representatives then how would you decide? So I, on the one hand I disagree with you Slavomir because the there is an, somehow it's an, it's an ultimate need for parties because they are, uh, how do I say so, so the, the power is at the parties. I mean like they, they work at, at, for their logic better if you are just an independent actor. But on the other hand, the playground of politics is not just consists of parties. There are a lot of other players there. The, one player might be a demonstration, the other player might be a movement, a third player might be the uh, NGOs. Unfortunately, currently in Hungary, the NGOs are under attack, not the government by the NGOs. But uh, for just an example for what can happen if, when a movement uh, tries to express uh, something uh, which they would like to happen. Uh, two years before, we made six points with the student network. Uh, a week later, one party uh, arrived to the parliament with our six points and a big Molino and they showed the six points. Unfortunately, uh, two weeks before I learned that uh, uh, they actually called the student network movement and said that they will do this and uh, somebody knew about this already. I just learned it two weeks before. And anyway, uh, this was a case when, uh, when some demonstrations, uh, a new movement influenced party politics and this is somehow a representation already. I mean, like, uh, if parties, so you said previously that, uh, oh, the, they just, you know, make surveys and then they uh, know uh, what you think and then they were rep represented. But, but somehow, yeah, partly, this is their job. On the other hand, their job is to influence. Okay, if you're a professional politician, you're, you're, you're professional in philosophy, in politics, in, blah, 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 in the social sciences, you have the responsibility to tell that, okay, I, I know that you hate the Jews who will finance the new left, but, uh, you know, they, they are people like you. Hmm? Can you understand this? I mean, I'm saying this to the society. Uh, okay, so let, we are right to the funding. I pretty much don't care who will fund the new left. 
it's a must that somebody should fund it and they should not ask anything. By this I mean the, f the financing of anything should be totally independent of any idea. I mean like the financer should not tell that, okay, I will give you this money but only if your party logo will be blue or anything. anything. You mean, so I think this is a one and the most important thing, uh, handling any money. The, who gives and who receives should not be in that relation that they should they will influence uh, well, well that's very nice but but it's already happened i mean does it happen already i mean that you you i mean you're not movement but this demonstration has to be organized so whatever i mean there uh, should be, uh -huh. is there is there any money there yeah uh okay uh just two projects i pers so one about the demonstrations uh, from six to ten people went with boxes around the crowd and we got back a lot of money. I mean like what, the second demonstration we collected more than two million forints which is around uh, which is around six thousand euros something like that. Uh, so we we, we was able to finance the, the demonstrations, I mean like, you know, the, the, the sound system, which is a, yeah. the only good system, yeah, uh, from, uh, from, from uh, public money, I mean like the people gave it to us. And then we uh, posted on the Facebook and our web page that you gave this many money and we use this many money and we'll, we'll use the rest for, because we got some, uh, we made a lot of demonstration before when we lost around 3,000 euros. Yeah, so that happened as well. On the other hand, I participate in a project uh, sponsored by or funded by the Norwegian Fund, which is under attack in Hungary recently. But this is the same case, and this is the case what I was talking about. We had an idea. We wrote it down. They gave the money. They don't ask anything. Just what you wrote down should be done. Okay, Slavic. So I, I think it's your final word because then we. I think it's. Okay, I will tell you where the money. Uh, Tell us. Uh, actually, I, but I would like to answer all those questions. Yeah. I can begin with money. But the, the question is money, agenda, not agenda. Uh, you, you, you started with the money. But, yeah, but you also said agenda, the leftist agenda as opposed to conservative agenda and representation. Okay? Actually, my main job is fundraising. And it's not about 6,000 euros, but because we have our, the budget of the organization, which has five cultural centers, which has Institute for Advanced Study daily, three journals, and does um, more, almost 1,500 projects a year only in Poland, and we are in Ukraine and in Russia, is a few million dollars. And uh, we had to gather it on, uh, every year, okay? So this is a real money. I mean, 6,000 euros probably Berlusconi spends on the cigarettes a month, probably, at, at most. And, uh, and, and actually, demonstrations are cheap, especially in the era of Facebook. The problem is what you get for it, like in the long term. The other example you get is an example of NGOs. The market, the Norwegian fund, we get also from them sometimes money, and it's a much bigger money than 6,000 euros, okay, of course, and, but this is NGO financing, and actually we, we do the same, we, we, we have a publishing house which is pretty successful, so it's, it's let's say, 20% of the budget, uh, big fundraising, so guys are like Soros or big American or European foundations or European Commission is, uh, is a second source and small fundraising, people like just regular people or some, you know, we are very active in the field of art or field of culture, we get some money also from you know organizing this stuff so but we 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 developed for those 13 years many uh, many ways how to gather the money in, and you can really get it if you really if you really want and you're like you know you it is possible we've proven it many many times and but we did it uh, without being a political party, without being a political party, we created agenda, we proven that we are very efficient also changing the law. And if you look at your own country, uh, and if you look what the, what your friends or our common friends are saying, like Michael Kazin, who wrote the book, how the social movements, like he, 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 he checked what uh, what happened to the American law in the 20th century? And he, he realized that not parties, but 
but four strong social movements, civil rights movement, feminist movement, LGTB movement, and anti-war movement, uh, n n they are responsible for a big majority of what has changed. Actually, your party works not as a like, party pluralism, so everybody can invent your own party. You cannot really do it. They work as a civil servants, groups of people who must be influenced by the social movement so they can do something. Last year, your parties alone together almost defaulted your country, which is the richest country in the world. People, civil servants, were not taking pensions and money for like, I don't know, a few weeks in America, not in Kenya, okay? So this, this, was the, this was what your two political parties did, okay? Not the regular people. Yeah, because you don't have any more, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, if you, we, take, we can take, to, we together can try to, you know, start new and you're gonna get the real answer to your question. But, uh, but, but regarding the, the parties and the Jews, actually, please notice one thing. Uh, the problem, the real problem, I'm, I'm, and please, I'm not just personal enemy of political parties. I, again, they, if they can be useful, do it, take it, go there. If they can't be useful, try to do it another way, okay? Be smart, don't stick your mind to political party or other thing. But, uh, but, but, but uh, actually the problem with political parties is like another American intellectual, very pretty described, Thomas Frank. Why people vote against their own interest? Because this is the problem. People are voting for Bush, and Bush are cutting tax poor people, and they are cutting taxes for the richest people. It happens everywhere in the world. They did the same with Kaczynski. They elected Kaczynski, and what Kaczynski did, invented, implemented the flat tax. So now if you, pay, if you paid higher tax, you open your entrepreneurship, you pay almost nothing. Okay, and this is this is what happens everywhere. I don't know how it goes in Slovakia, but but you know, but 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 people are voting against their own interest, and these parties serve as a filter to make it possible. Okay, and uh, <coughs> and, um, and and last point regarding the representation, parties is a very very fragile question because when started the real problem with antisemitism. There's a real problem with anti-Semitism and the real danger to Jews began when the three empires collapsed and, and, and representative democracy made, make it uh, able to have massive anti-Semitism in Europe. Before, com com Jew Jewish communities were dealing with one person, okay, and they can negotiate pretty not bad conditions. After it, a big you know, part of society, anti-Semitic society, started to have a big, to, 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 to give a big problem to the, to the Jewish communities. It's not an argument against the political parties. It's just an argument that always politics will be about the people and the gender. And now I'm coming to your, to your, to your, to your question. Actually, conservative agenda, as you mentioned it and describe it, is no agenda. Because what is it, come on, family, it's not a political question. Okay? You don't need politics to create your family, actually. The politics starts a bit higher. If you take all those political philosophers, you know, beginning with Hegel, who invented the notion of civil society, you have these three levels. Family, the last level is state, and something behind is a civil society. Uh, and here began, poli begins politics. Conservative agenda is, is, is under it, okay? So they, you don't really, they are trying rather to stop the left. If you look what happened in 19th century, what was the dictionary of the left, democracy was the first word. It was very particular leftist agenda. It was not a common idea. Conservatives were not the, you know, the friends of democracy. Okay? Now, when left made it common question and no one can oppose it, then of course even conservatives will support as many other things, okay? So, so this is, the, the, the problem with, with, with agenda is always a leftist problem, okay? And now, what, what might be, what can make representation still possible? Because of course I agree with you. Representation is a necessary and like you cannot avoid it. 
that, the question to, that must be answered is how to regain sovereignty again, so we can we so we, you can really choose your politics, your economic politics mostly, because now you cannot really choose it. In America, it is still possible, but America creates one fourth of the global GDP. It's not the case in any other country except of China. And actually, the problem with China is that China proved that you don't need democracy for the development. So this is another problem. But, uh, but I believe that we can regain, I believed it a bit more stronger before, not, not now. But I still think that it is only possible when we go to the supranational level. EU was a project to regain sovereignty, so you can again choose your politics on this level. And then if political parties can be efficient, I'm the first to subscribe to them. Okay? So, um, more or less, this, this would be my answer. Let me take my notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I think, I think, uh, I have no idea what the time is about, but I think it's, we had been talking along, and I, I don't want the public to be dead uh, um, and tired, but uh, I enjoyed that very much, my, my <laughs> friends. I mean, I, I, um, I, I just uh, got a lot of information from you, and I think it's, um, well, if I, as an old veteran, I would say, well, if the young, youngers are like you, I will be happy then. I just can imagine that my life is not anymore. I mean, I, I don't need any, any, any then to start again with politics because you will do it much better, much better than, than, uh, than me. What do you think? I mean, they don't need us anymore, do they? Oh, we need you, Mark. <laughs> okay, that was a rhetoric question. I don't need an answer. Uh, I was happy with... Yes, but I have an answer to that. You know what Picasso says? It needs a lot of time to become... I needed a lot of time to become young. <laughs> so, and there is, Actually, a, there is there a sense is, in that. There is also one good example, very well known, what Roosevelt said when the people came to him saying, like, do something with the crisis. Okay, and Roosevelt said, okay, I agree with you. Now go to the streets and force me. <laughs> you know it. Yes, okay. I, I think the, 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 the history is a little more complicated. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Everything is complicated. That's a very good sentence to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you to my guests. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.